This one ties in with a show not too long ago. In 1990, Itsy Bitsy Teeny Weeny Yellow <gasps> Polka Dot Bikini by Bombalurina was the UK number one single. Nice. Bombalurina was a children's TV presenter Timmy Mallet with a remake of the 1960 hit. So, a little bit of a comeback there. Sweet. I have that song, too. I should play it. You know what? I think I will. Hang on a minute. I'm going to play it. Give me one moment here, guys. Oh, and while you're doing that, I have one more good one, too. Go for it. Uh, I wouldn't call it a good one. It's kind of a sad one for fans, for R&B fans especially. Um, in 2001, on this day, American singer and actress Aaliyah was killed in a plane crash in the Bahamas. Age no. Oh, that's bad news. Yeah, that's not really all that much of a good one, but it's something worth remembering because uh, she was definitely a really very talented musician. Um, very talented actress, too. Her, um, her last movie was... Uh, Queen of the Damned, I believe, which was yes, part of the Anne Rice yes. vampire novels, and was supposed to be the sequel to Interview with the Vampire, although it wasn't quite as well received, if I remember correctly. Mm. Here's Shelly. I found actually speaking of like today in music, I was just looking it up, seeing what else was out there. Uh, 2003, Dick Peterson from the Kingsmen joined 753 other guitarists for, to perform "Louie Louie" for a charity fundraiser in Tacoma, Washington. No. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. They played pretty much in sync the entire time. It was really, really incredible. I think I think there's a video of it floating out there, but you really kind of have to dig deep because it was before the big, uh, of course, before the video like YouTube craze and everything. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. So here, guys. Here is you know. Are we are all we all good with with the today's music? That's the best I got, so if we're all good, we're all good. Okay, so here is the song, TCPC, Teeny Weeny, Yellow Pock, Yellow Pock, <laughs> here's the song. You know what it is. <laughs> that yellow spotted thing. She was afraid to come out of the locker. She was as nervous as she could be. She was afraid to come out of the locker. She was afraid that somebody would say Two, three, four, tell the people what she wore It was an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini That she wore for the first time of day An itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini So in the locker she wanted to say Two, three, four, stick around, we'll tell you more bum, bum, bum. She was afraid to come out in the open So a blanket around her she wore She was afraid to come out in the open And so she sat from the up on the shore Two, three, four, tell the people what she wore It was an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini That she wore for the first time today And itsy bitsy teeny weeny Stick around, we'll tell you more. Now she's afraid to come out of the water. And I wonder what she's gonna do. Now she's afraid to come out of the water. And the poor little girl's turning blue. Two, three, four, tell the people what she wore. It was an itsy bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. That she wore for the first time today And it's a bitsy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini So in the water she wanted to stay From the locker to the blanket From the blanket to the shore From the shore to the water Guess there isn't any more And there you go the very first uh, 
Bikini Videos and Song by Brian Halan. Ta-da! Ta-da! Fine. <laughs> Don't enjoy my enthusiastic. So, anything else I want to talk about? <laughs> Blackie's gone. It's just us three here enjoying the Wednesday night. Well, it's almost Thursday now. Oh, it's been Thursday for me for it, a little while. It's been Thursday for about an hour here. Mm-hmm. No, well, it's not Thursday yet. I got like one more hour. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anybody else out there has a question for Sean from Maximus? <laughs> right? <laughs> crickets. <laughs> All I hear are crickets. Don't be shy. Call in. Three what six. questions? What? what questions do you guys have? For you guys? For you? Yeah. Go ahead. Shoot. How prepared are you for having the kid on the way? <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> the answer is no. <laughs> the answer, uh, honestly, I mean, we're we're pretty well prepared. I mean, it's really coming down to basically we're just, we're trying to find our own house. We're we're still living at my mom's house, and I love my mom, but you know, we, we I'm married. I need my own place and my wife. Mm. So, house hunting is not going as planned, but we're getting there, and we're we're getting pretty prepared. It's like like last minute preparation, but we're getting there. Mm. It's kind of one of those situations where you you do all this stuff to be ready, and you're you're really thinking, okay, now we got this taken care of. Then something else comes up, and you're like, oh no, we forgot about this, and you freak out a little bit. But then everything's fine because it's not that big of a deal. But everything seems like such a huge deal. Yes. When it's just, you know, it's going to be all right. Everybody's going to get where they need to go. It's going to come out when it needs to. And that's just how the world works. <laughs> Mrs. Spider, the chat room goes, no one's prepared. Have you heard that a lot lately? No one is prepared when the kid is born. It's kind of all in theory because for your first time parents you're you can get all the advice in the world from people and yep. it won't matter at all. It's it's all going to be brand new and my daughter's almost 2 and we're still learning about her yep. and about how she's act how she acts, how she's going to act, how she's growing. It's it's a non-stop learning thing and all the best you can do is just Hold on tight. That's what everyone tells me. You know, you can get, get all the advice that you need from anybody that you talk to, and it's every kid's different. Everything happens mm-hmm. for a reason. I've got uh, I got a couple of friends here in St. Louis. Um, their baby actually they they took her to the hospital this morning. She came down with the flu. And she's a newborn, mm-hmm. and. Everyone's freaking out of the baby. You know, there's something wrong with the baby. And they're like, no, she's just really sick. Everything's fine. Don't worry about her. Like, she's fine. She'll be okay. Yeah, their their system is, is growing just like everything else. They're, yep. they're going to get these little bugs and things. And it's going to happen. You just got to let them roll with it. Like, we... There's moments where we've really been like, oh, no, I wonder if there's something really wrong. And those have probably been the moments where there's been least cause to be worried about anything. And then yep. there's other times when we've been like, oh, yeah, nothing's wrong at all. We probably should have been a little bit more worried, but it all turned out okay. So, uh. <laughs> mm-hmm. so you know, it's you just never know which way to go. And you can overreact or underreact, but it's just how it's going to be. Right. Right. You know, I've got... I, well, I should say my best friend's cousin. Her son, he has got a behavioral issue. Mm. You know, her kids are awesome. Like I grew up knowing her one, her one son who's now a senior in high school, and he was like, you know, like that little little brother in the group. And she had a couple more kids along the way with her, with her husband. And her one son, he's got a, he's got a behavioral issue. 
and he has these, re- these really, really bad outbursts of anger. And they thought maybe it's, just, it's terrible too, it's, you know, like stretching out longer than it should be. Now it's just being a behavioral issue. Mm. You know, everyone tells me, oh, you got to watch out for this guy, watch out for that. And I'm like, I'm not worried because I, I want my kid to be adventurous. I want her to have, you know, the imagination and the creativity that I have. I also want her to be, I hope she's as stubborn as my wife. That will keep, you know, most of the guys away, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just got to learn and do stuff at their own pace. I mean, people tend yep. to, it, it's a tough line to walk wondering if you're trying if you're sheltering them too much or if you're letting them get all the experiences they need and and it it sometimes you sometimes think am i being really irresponsible letting my child play with this thing here and then you're like no she's okay she's you know she's advancing here and she's advancing here everything's fine you know and the one thing i'm really looking forward to is like there's a park here in st louis called castlewood state park and they have this really long hiking trail it goes like way up on top of this like this cliff, and you walk down like this really muddy like dirt trail, and it goes underneath like train tracks. You, t- you climb this huge staircase to get to the top of the cliff, and like I want to be able to take her out with me and, and do those things. Like you got all these parents nowadays, you're like oh I don't want my kid getting dirty because he can get sick. Like mm-hmm. you, what? It's like do you not realize the dirtier you let your kid get, the the better their immune system gets. Like. Like, I want my kid to go out and play in the mud and get dirty and and be stupid like I was. Yeah, there's been numerous times with uh, with my daughter where she's she's fallen down or she's tripped or something like that. And the instinct is to be like, oh, no, are you okay? It's, uh, oh, and cuddle them all up and cuddle them all up. And, you know, they got to take some bumps. They got to learn. Yeah. And if you just instantly just act like it's the complete end of the world, then they're going to think every little small thing is the mm-hmm. end of the world. They're just not going to be ready. Right. You know, another thing, too, with, with me having a girl is like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be the protective dad. Like, that's just going to happen. Because, you know, I, I'm protective of my wife. I don't want other dudes, like, getting all up in her face and stuff when we're out. And Like, I, I don't mind who she talks to. I know she's got guys who are friends. At the same time, though, like, I'm having a girl. That little girl's gonna be my whole world, and I'll be damned if some dude treats me, if so, treats me, treats her. <laughs> I'll be damned if some dude treats her like like she's just a piece of meat that mm. they can just have their way with. Like I will put my hands on some kid if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the other thing too. I mean, people people get so freaked out about oh, well, you can't tell people to do this and you can't tell people to do that, and it's like why not? It's my kid. Yeah, you know, and you're like, well, it's irresponsible, and it's this and it's that. It's just, no, you you raise your kid your way. I'll raise my kid my way, and that's that. Right. And when they meet on the playground, they'll either play together or they'll you know beat each other up. Who knows? No. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the kids, this the stuff will happen. They'll do the things that kids do, and they'll learn the way that you taught them. Right. You know, I told my wife like. Mine and Blackie's side of the family, on my dad's side, all the men played music. I want her to be the first Starks kid that actually, or the first Starks woman that that plays music. I mean, my Blackie's, Blackie's sister, she actually played violin. I think my Aunt Carla learned how to play violin a little bit here and there, but like none of the women really took off with it. I want to see her be like the next Joan Jett or the next Lizzie Hale and like see her really get out there and, and do the same thing I'm doing. If not, you know, it's whatever. She can do her own thing, but... It'd be cool to see her actually like do that kind of lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And the the biggest thing too is there's so much potential. Like especially if you if you're exposing them to music and things like that. Like m- my daughter, she goes back and forth. Sometimes she wants to listen to music. Sometimes she doesn't. And music will just make her upset. So you, you go back and forth with what you play for. Right. But she's recently since she's a big fan of dinosaurs, she watches these dinosaur cartoons and everything. There's a song from the from the old uh, '90s Super Mario Brothers movie that was one of those so bad it's awesome kind of movies. <laughs> and uh, the song, there's a song by George Clinton called "Walk the Dinosaur," and she loves it. Not just <laughs> because there's dinosaurs in it, but because it's like it, she wants to dance. It moves, and she loves right. it. And she's just like, "Here's my daughter dancing to." Or bouncing along to 